Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. You can probably already tell what I'm doing from the title of this video, a renaissance makeup tutorial, or at least my own version of a renaissance makeup tutorial. I'm first starting with a primer. Um, back in the day, I know they used egg whites and applied a thick layer over their skin to give it a glossy, smooth finish. But here I'm just gonna be using a pore minimizing, moisturizing face primer. Look at that chill. And then I'm gonna go in with a clown white grease paint. And the reason I'm using this is because back then it was very desirable to have pale, pale skin. So of course I'm exaggerating on this and going a little bit paler than they probably would have. But back then I know they used white powders made of very harmful ingredients that we now know not to use on our skin but they would also bleach their skin or do certain chemical processes to lighten their skin because it was so important to them that they looked pale and modest. It was really a weird time if you think about it. So skip the bronzer, skip the foundation, skip that luminizing glow, dewy base primer because you want to look like a modest pale queen. And make sure to cover your ears and blend down your neck a little bit just to wherever your neckline of your top is going to be just so it doesn't look too harsh at your jawline and make you look like you have a floating head. Then I'm taking my Ben Nye Neutral Set Powder on the beauty blender I used to put on the foundation and I'm setting under my eyes to begin with and then just packing on the powder over the rest of my face so I look really matte and powdery. And then taking a fluffy brush, I'm dusting off any excess powder and just making sure that all of the powder is well distributed around my face. If you're following along at home, then now you're going to want to take a white eyeliner pencil, put that in your waterline to exaggerate the size of your eyes. Now is when I kind of divert to whatever my creative mind wanted me to do with this makeup. But my goal here was to get some really sunken, smoky eyes, just to look like a really sad, just typical Renaissance painting, sad eyes. And to do this, I'm using my Lunatec Cosmetics palette that my friend gifted me, and I'm taking a very mauvey, ashy, purpley shade. You see it on the screen. I don't need to describe it to you. <laughs> And then on a short, stubbier brush, I'm going to take that same shadow and line my lower lash line, but leave a little bit of space. So I put the shadow kind of in the bottom socket of my eye, just right under that fatty little piece of skin that flaps over your eye. It sounds really gross, but it makes a lot of sense if you think about it and look at a mirror at the same time. And then after I place that shadow where I want it, I'm taking the other end of the brush and blending out into that tired section of the eye, like you know where you get really blue after not sleeping for a few days. Next I'm going to take my Tarte Pro palette and take those rusty purpley shades and just deepen the eye socket a little bit to look even more sore and tired and sad. To keep this look from looking too effects and more just kind of artistic, I'm going to take a clean blending brush and just really buff out the edges so that it looks blended and smooth and like a painting. After that, I went back in with those other shadows and just deepened them up again. And then I blended more and I just went back and forth until I was happy. Back in with the Lunatics Cosmetics palette, I'm taking the Rusty Purple Shimmery shade on my finger and I'm going to pat that in the first half of my eyelid. And then I'm going to blend again to just make sure the edges look amazing. I touched up that white eyeliner pencil again and then I went in with my black tattoo liner to apply my eyebrows which I'm doing just a straight line, very thin, over my natural eyebrow shape, and I'm just following it. Um, you can really make your eyebrows any shape you'd like. A rounded look was really popular back then. Once you're happy with your eyebrows, then take that same liner and line your eyes. Don't do your typical 
winged liner, a round eye shape was really popular, so I'm making it really thick in the center of my eyes and then thinner at the edges. Next, I'm gonna curl my lashes to make sure my eyes look really open and big and wide, and then lightly apply mascara just on the top lashes. Back then, it wasn't really a feature of the makeup to have thick lashes, it was more just to darken them and to have them look very thin and noticeable, but not to stand out or overpower your face. This is time for the lips, and I'm taking my Dose of Colors Rosebud Liquid Lipstick. I'm keeping my lips super tiny. I'm lining inside of the lines, not even touching them, and very pointy at the cupid's bow, but everywhere else, very thin, very pursed look. I'll come back to the lips later, but let's move on to the cheeks. For that, I'm gonna take my MAC Process Magenta Chromaline cream pigment and I'm tapping a little bit on my cheeks and then I'm gonna go in with a brush to blend it out. The cheeks back then were not on the apples, they weren't even really on the cheekbone, they were kind of below it to make the cheeks look very sunken. It does an interesting thing to the face, you know, play around with the placement, it can be really fun. I love blush, it just makes such a difference to the face. Next I'm gonna take my Kilowatt Foil from Fenty Beauty to highlight my cupid's bow and then the bottom of my lip as well just it's more of an artistic feature it's not at all period accurate and then to make the look even more creative and artistic i'm taking cap on d lipstick and i forgot the shade of this but i'll leave it down below i'm just putting that over the top of that liquid lipstick and I'm focusing the color on the center of my lips and then sharing it out closer to the edges. All right guys, are you ready for the final step? We're gonna add some milk face gloss, which is my new favorite tool. So I'm just playing with my finger on my cheeks and really rubbing it in, making sure the makeup ends up looking a little bit disturbed underneath. And I'm applying it on my brow bone as well, just a C shape on my face to really catch the light and make the look look even more dimensional and less accurate to the time period and just more creative and fun. I think it looks really freaking cool. I hope you guys love it. Stay tuned for the product shots or the face shots, the look shots. I don't know what you want to call them, but I hope you guys enjoy the video. I love you guys so much. Have a great day, week, and month, and I'll see you next week. Bye!